Hey there, and welcome to part three of Intro to Extreme Long Range. This is the one that I think I might be the most excited about because we're finally going to tie it all together. So if you missed parts one and two of the series, in part one, we take a look at the rifle, optic, hand loading, those type items, as well as performance at 100 yards of this package. So it kind of set a baseline that we're going to build on. And then in part two, we looked at supporting gear. So everything outside of the rifle that I had to think of to get into extreme long range or areas that I had to improve. Now in part three, we're going to set some targets out there at distance. We're going to shoot them. And I'm going to let you see how effective I am with this package. So you'll see for me, this is a journey. I'm no expert, but I'm definitely to a point where I enjoy this. To me, it's a challenge and it's an area that I'm still growing in. So can't wait to show you where I'm at. Can't wait to show you down the road what I'm working on as far as further shots and everything. But for now, let's move into part three. If you like the sounds of this, or you've already seen parts one and two, I'd really appreciate it if you'd help me grow this channel. And it's your interaction that's gonna do that. So if you enjoy it, hit that subscribe button, hit me with a thumbs up or a comment. I'd love to hear about where you're at on your long range journey. Are you trying to get into extreme long range? Is there any questions or any pointers that you've got for me? I'd love to hear if there's something I'm missing, point it out so that I can get better. That's what we're here for. So without further ado, let's tie it all together here in part three. Let's move down to the range. Let's make some shots. What we've got to do is make sure we've got good dope. So I know my first target out there is at 1820. So I use the shooter app. So I'm going to go in here, the profiles I've already built. I'm going to choose 1820 yards. And that gives me 17.5 mils. So I'm going to dial that onto my scope. So there's 17.5. One of the most important things about a ballistic app like this is making sure you've got a true velocity, which we just checked at 100 yards at 2870. And then making sure you've corrected your BC. Every bullet, they'll give you the BC out of the box. But when you put it in your rifle and you shoot it, you'll find that your results don't 100% match what you get out of the box. So what I did on mine is you put the box BC in, you fire knowing your velocity, you check where your impacts are, and out there at this kind of distance, that difference is what you go in and adjust your BC based on. So if I'm getting 17.5 mils with the box BC, and I'm finding that I'm hitting low, and I have to dial up an additional 0.5 mils, what I have to do is go into my app, into the BC, lower that BC number until I get the drop in the calculator that matches what I'm actually getting on the range. So I've already done that with this bullet. I know my BC is a little bit different than what's in the box, but if you're new to extreme long range, just knowing your velocity is only part one. You've got to correct your BC before you shoot long range. So that said, we got our targets out, we've got our dope dialed on, we've checked our 100 yard zero speed and groups. Now it's time to stretch this rifle out to distance. It's a very, very calm night out here, but there's a little bit of a left to right. So I'm gonna favor left 0.5 mils for this first round. What we're gonna do when we shoot is look for our impact. It's very dry out, so we should be able to see our impact pretty easily. All right, check the level, we look good. Check the parallax, it look good. All right, so in my scope, you're at 25 power. Looking through the Tacticam. All right, 0.5 left. Just off the right edge. So let's go 0. 0.6. Oh, just over the, I think that was just over the head. Stay at 0. 0.6. impact so that was three rounds to get on 
0.6 mils. I'm going to bump it right left a little bit more to 0.7. Ooh, just off the left edge, go to 0.6. Level still looks good. Impact. So you can see it's crucial to be able to see your impacts in order to correct. Now that IPSC out there is a tough target because it's very narrow. We're right at a 1 MOA target. So any little change in wind or level will impact what we're doing out there at distance. All right, so I didn't get to shoot 2300 the other night. So we're out here on a new night. Got the 30 inch circle put back out there right at 2300, 2310 yards. I've got some 238 tips loaded up. Wanted to put a couple rounds down there while the lighting was good and the conditions were good and show you what that looks like with the exact same load that we put on 100 the other night. So for 2300, Pull up my shooter app here. And we'll put in the 300 PRC with the 238 tip. We'll put in 20, I'm going to put in 2310. And that calls for 27.5 mils. So let me put in. Alright, there's 27.2, and that's all I've got in the scope. So I'm going to have to hold over three tenths or so to get out there to 23.10. So I had the Tacticam running so you could see just how crazy the elevation difference is. And there's our target. So it's in the shade right now. You're at 20, about 27 power. I don't know if you noticed it in the Tacticam, but there's this power line out there at about five, 600 yards. We're actually gonna be shooting over the top of the power line to get out there to 2310. So I've got my level. We'll make sure that looks good. I'm gonna load up some ammo, put the GoPro down there at 2310, and we'll send some rounds. I've dialed up 27.2. Looking at the target, I'm gonna hold over a half just to start with. There's a slight right to left wind out there tonight, so I'm gonna favor right one mil for these first rounds see if i can catch an impact and correct from there all right 10 rounds all right so i'm gonna go up 0.5 right 0.1 parallax looks good level looks good look like that was right at the base of the target so I need to come up, I'm going to come up to there. That's like 0.8 over, and we'll stay at 0.1 on the wind. Just off that right edge. Elevation looked okay. Cut my wind back to, let's go 0.6. Just off the left edge. Elevation looked good. Point eight. I believe that was just off the right side. I believe I saw a splash there. Point seven. Definitely off the right side. Point. So I need to cut back. Point five. Elevation looks decent. Oh, dropped off the four o'clock. So point five. We're in the ballpark. Let's cheat up and go point four. way over it so that's where your velocity extreme spread and sd become super important
So elevation looked good, or windage looked good at 0.4. Go back to where we were at 0.8 on the elevation. Impact for 0.8. 0.4 impact 0.8.4 let's try again just over it so two for 10, but what you can see when we get out to these distances, that's where your velocity is crucial. And right now, mine's decent, but needs to be better. It's decent enough, I made a couple hits, could be way better. All right, if you've made it this far, I'm really impressed and I thank you for sticking around. Now, let's move into what we just saw there, shooting on the range. So what you saw me do, earlier we saw the 100 yard performance, then we moved out, we ranged it, and then we move out and we're gonna shoot it. Now, a piece of gear that I don't have in my hand, I'm actually using my phone right now to video this, but you saw it in that video, is a ballistic app or something like a Kestrel. You've gotta have a really good ballistic app to plug all your data, your velocity, your bullet BC into to be able to get an idea of what your dope is at distance. So I've been using the shooter app on my iPhone for years, it works great. The key thing there is make sure you're putting in the best data you can because good data in gets you good data out. So I talked about in that video, correcting your BC. That's a skill you'll need to do once you get into extreme long range because the BC on the box of a bullet does not always match the performance that you get out of your rifle. So as you grow and you start to understand that, that's a skill that needs to be done because that will greatly increase the accuracy of the data that you get out of your ballistic app. So again, myself, shooter app works great. I don't use a Kestrel, I'd love to one day, but I don't need a Kestrel right now. Usually the wind, I can ballpark the wind, I can hold and correct based off of that, use my little wind flags right here, whatever. So now, then we started shooting. We put a couple of five rounds at the full size Ipsic at 1,820 yards, and we got a couple of hits. What you saw there at that distance was not a great performance, but enough that again, I'm happy and I enjoy doing it. But the key thing, you've got to be able to spot your impact. So what you saw in that video is I would shoot, I would watch for my impact, and then if it bounced off one side of the plate, I would correct until I got on the plate. Now, I didn't see a ton of elevation error in that 1,820 yard shooting. There's a little bit there, but it wasn't that crazy. It was good enough that we could pretty much dial our elevation, get our windage, and then we would make some hits. Now, when we stepped it out to 2,310 yards, that's where I believe we really do start to see my velocity performance impact the accuracy of this rifle. So this 30 inch circle is well over one MOA at 2,310, but you saw I had a pretty hard time hitting this target. And a lot of it was due to rounds going high, rounds going low, and then definitely rounds bouncing off the left and right. So as you can see, 30 inches, it's a big target, but it's still very challenging for myself. So in that video, you saw a couple times a round would land low, I'd correct up, and then I'd get a round that would land over the top, I'd correct down, it'd go back down. Anyway, inconsistent velocity, that's what it looks like on the target. So for myself, my goal now is to push out to a mile and a half. I wanna push this 300 PRC out to a mile and a half. I wanna push my 338 Lapua Magnum out to a mile and a half. That's well beyond the supersonic capabilities of this round, so this, 300 PRC is going subsonic at about 2,050. We're well beyond that. I understand these ATIPs are remaining fairly stable. And as you can see, when they hit the plate, they appear to be hitting as they're stable. They don't appear to be tumbling into that plate. So I think we can get out there. I do have one hit at 2,610 yards, just shy of a half mile or a mile and a half, but there was way too many misses in there for me to count that as consistency. So personally, I'm happy with where I'm at at 1,820. I believe at 2310, you can see the error in my velocity showing up. And that's currently where I'm spending my time. And that's in the reloading room. That's not a shooting skill. That is, I've got to dial in my load, dial in my reloading process, and that'll come in time. So 
It's worth noting, I've shot factory Horn of the Ammunition out of this rifle, out of my Ruger Precision rifle, and the velocity consistency out of that load was absolute uh, garbage. It was really, really bad. So what you're seeing there in my hand loads, that's about 18 months of my reloading skills. I've had to increase them. I had to get a new powder dropper. I had to change my load creation process. How do I find the node? I had to get uh, more consistent on seating my primers. I realized my primers were not at the same depth. So when I would go to measure my seating depth on my bullet, there would be variation there that was actually in the primer and how it was seated. So there's a ton that goes into this. I had to get an annealer to start annealing the case mouth, the case neck. Started using a mandrel to expand to try to get more consistent on that case neck. So there's a lot of things I had to do reloading wise that never showed up at closer distances that I've done to get to the numbers that you're seeing. So you're not going to just buy a rifle, get some ammo, and go shoot a mile plus with any kind of consistency. Now that said, I would encourage you to do that because if you never try, you'll never be able to do it. So for myself, yeah, I bought the Ruger Precision Rifle, got into it, started seeing gaps in my reloading, started seeing gaps in my skills. That rifle allowed me to really fine tune those processes, allowed me to grow as a shooter and become as consistent as you've seen me shoot in other videos. But if you never try, you'll never do it. And I can promise you, we all have bad days shooting. I had one today. I'm not that happy with how I performed at 2310, but we all have bad days shooting. You're not going to hit every round. You're not going to shoot every group sub MOA, but don't quit. Don't stop. That's the one thing I've learned. It's really easy, especially with the velocity piece, to say, man, I just can't get there. I can't get to my target and give up. Or, man, I keep throwing flyers out of this group. You know, what's the problem? That's never going to work out there at distance. And you're right. If you stop there, you never will. So a can-do attitude is crucial. Get the gear, get the rifle, get the ammo, and go do it. Because as you do it, you'll start to see those gaps, you'll get better, and you'll be able to push further and further. So if there's a closing message, I would encourage you, if you've got a place to go stretch out, go do it. Have a can-do attitude. Don't quit. Give it a try, and I promise you, you'll love it. Then you'll be just like myself. You'll be making hits at your goal of a mile. You'll be shooting smaller targets, and you're going to want to push further. Now you're going to want to go to a mile and a half. You're going to want to go to two miles. It's an absolute ton of fun waiting four seconds for that bullet to fly to the target and see if it's going to hit or not. I love it. It's addicting. So apologize for the long video. I feel like there's a lot more talking here and less shooting than normal, but I appreciate you sticking around. If you enjoy this kind of content, please like the video, share it, subscribe to the channel. Also hit me up on the Instagram page, Mountains Mullets America. That's a really cool place where I can engage with you. We can have conversations. I've had several video ideas come from the Instagram page. So Hit me up over there because it's a lot more interactive. But really appreciate you sticking around. I hope you found this video valuable. And in future videos, I want to try to push myself to my own personal best distance with consistency. So what I'm going to do between now and those future videos is dial in my hand loads, get more consistent on the velocity, and then we're going to stretch further, and I can't wait to show you that on video. So thanks for watching. Join me in the next one.